Hello, many welcome to my YouTube videos. This is PK or JRoot, and today we're going to be looking at my top 10 games of 2015. Now, before we get started, I want to just give some honorable mentions of three games that I actually enjoyed or should get an honorable mention because I haven't played them, but I know they're great games. And an example of this is Undertale. I haven't gotten to play Undertale, but I know my friend Sawyer, he loves it, and I can see the appeal. I've seen some funny things happen, I've seen some reaction videos. I just want to give an honorable mention for that. I didn't play it, that's why it's not on this list, but I know it's a great game. Another one is Call of Duty Black Ops 3. I know a lot of COD hate is something that's yearly, but this one is actually a gem. The Black Ops series are always great. I was jam filled with content and the zombies in this is pretty much why I buy it, but seriously, this one is a great purchase this year. Another one is Guitar Hero Live, something that I was unexpectedly gonna like. Uh, I picked it up on Black Friday, and it actually has some great new gameplay mechanics. I know, right, a rhythm game with new gameplay me mechanics, but still, I enjoyed these three games. I think they should be in here, but one of them I didn't even play, and the two are not good enough for the next top ten. Number 10 is Monster Hunter 4. Now, I've never played a Monster Hunter game. I've never thought I'd put a 3DS game on my top 10. But when I started playing it, it really hooked me. Um, the combat system is a little weird, but it's very rewarding. Kind of reminds me of Dark Souls because it's very slow and kind of clunky. And the world around you is very nice for a 3DS game. It looks beautiful. And just the things you hunt is crazy. It feels like I'm playing a full triple A title on a 3DS game, like something I'd play on my PS4, and that's why I loved it. It was just a great time. It's probably the best handheld game of 2015, no doubt about it. And this one deserves number 10 for me on 2015. Come on, babies. Let's go through this type door. Oh, okay. Three, two, one. Ugh. Why do you stand so close? What the fuck? That guy's just sitting there! <laughs> oh god, help me, Josh! Josh, help me! Oh. No, behind you, behind you! Oh, shit! <laughs> Number 9 is Rainbow Six Siege. Now, this is actually a surprise for me. I didn't think I was going to put this one even close to the list. I didn't think I was going to pick it up at all. But, you know, because uh, Ubisoft has a track record of releasing broken games. But since I actually sat down and played it, it is a great time. The core gameplay and everything else that revolves around it, the teamwork, the intelligence, the destructible environments, it is something very special. Something that actually captivated me. Not many first person shooters do that. I know what I'm gonna see, I'm gonna expect what I'm gonna expect, but this one, when I actually played it, is where the difference came about me, and that's why I loved it. If you haven't played Rainbow Six Siege and actually tried to you know, get all the Ubisoft crap wear out of your head, then you'll actually enjoy it. It's something that was very surprising for me and I think will be very surprising for all gamers who try this game, especially uh, the community. The community is awesome. And that's why I'm going to give it number nine on my top 10 list. have got stag and from the look of him he won't last much longer i need to save him number eight on my list is batman arkham knight now this game has a little controversy going on with the pc port but I still loved it, even though I played it on PC and I just, you know, didn't think about the graphics as much because I'm not that big into the whole graphics scene. I thoroughly enjoyed it, even though there was a lot of Batmobile, like, oh my god, a lot of Batmobile. I still really loved the story and combat of the Batman games. I know it's a retelling of pretty much the Red Hood story, but I loved it either way. The presentation is what I'm looking for. The way they presented the story was something that I loved. 
how they tied in different characters to different story arcs and how they brought back different characters really made an impression on me. And I thought Batman Arkham Knight was a good way to end the trilogy. It gave something to Batman. At the end of Arkham Knight, you really thought that was the end. Or maybe you thought so. It's something that you can go both ways. And that's why I love Batman Arkham Knight. It gave me a resolution to the trilogy. And that's why it deserves 8 on my top 10. Number 7 on my list is Rocket League. And I have to say, Rocket League is a special game for me. Well, at least three times this year, I've had at least eight people come over to my house and we played and split screen Rocket League. They brought their PlayStation 4s over and it was a great time. Rocket League is a very simple game. And the thing is, there isn't much to talk about. But the best part about it is that it is simple. And that is why it is so easy to have all these people over. Everyone can get into it. There isn't a huge learning curve. You don't have to learn every gun or every mechanic. It's just you shoot a ball into a goal. And that's the magic of it. I will always remember Rocket League. It is such a special game, especially with the memories I made with my friends that I can never forget it. And that's why it deserves 7 on my top 10. Number 6 is Fallout 4. Now some people might think this game should be higher up in the list, but I personally think it deserves to be 6th. It's not the best game of the year. It's actually a pretty good game, but compared to Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, they didn't really innovate as much as I would like to. But still, overall, Fallout 4 is a great game. They improved on the combat, not having to rely on bats, which is nice. But they did get rid of more dialogue options, which I thought was awful. And they also had the base building, which is nice. It was a great distraction for me when I was getting a little annoyed with the crappy frame rates I was getting on PC. Maybe that's just my computer. But either way, I liked Fallout 4. It was a good Fallout game, but probably won't be my favorite Fallout game. That's probably going to be still Fallout 3. But either way, still a great game. Always remember this moment. We're down to five more games and I'm so excited to talk about these next five, but we have to get to number five first, and that is Life is Strange. Oh my gosh. This game had a big emotional impact on me. The characters, the setting, a lot about this game is absolutely perfect. It is a masterpiece. I'm only giving it five because Overall, it wasn't my favorite game, but probably one of my favorite stories in gaming of all time. Everything was done so well. How they handled teenagers and high school in these situations is absolutely perfect. How they included things that aren't very common in video games like suicide and disabilities. It is absolutely magnificent. A game goes to these lengths and builds on them with the characters, as well as the dialogue and voice acting. Absolutely 10 out of 10. This game knocked it out of the park. I could talk about Life is Strange for hours. It is not a game for me. It is art. It is an experience. It is only getting 5, and I feel bad for it, but it wasn't the best game. Overall, it was the greatest story in video games in a while. I will remember Life is Strange. It had a huge emotional impact on me, and you should go out and buy it right now. Number 4 on my list is Tales from the Borderlands. Now this might be a little confusing, I just gave Life is Strange the biggest praise ever, calling it art, an amazing story, but Tales from the Borderlands is different for me. I enjoyed it more than Life is Strange for different reasons. The reason why I love Tales from the Borderlands so much is that compared to Life is Strange and The Walking Dead, this one isn't so dependent on your choices saving everyone. Here it's a very lighthearted adventure, and that's why I love it. Everything is done with so much care, the art, the voice acting, the characters, and it's in a universe that 
is very different from what a narrative game should be. It's in a game about shooting and looting, and this is probably my favorite Borderlands game, which is crazy. I love Borderlands, but this drove the characters to some place that I would never expect with a narrative for Borderlands. And I had to give props to Telltale. They did so much work and so much care into this, and I was surprised. I thought a Borderlands narrative game was going to be stupid. But Tales from the Borderlands shines with its presentation, and that's why I give it a fourth, and I'm going to praise it forever. It is one of the most underrated games of 2015, and it is not for me, as it is fourth on my list. Number three on my list is Bloodborne. Now, I'm not a fan of the Dark Souls series, and I know that might be a huge shocker because I'm giving Bloodborne a number three, but Bloodborne was different for me. It had a slightly better, faster combat, the story was more interesting to me than Dark Souls was, and I don't know, I just loved the gameplay. Also, unraveling those mysteries online of what happened to old Yarnum and what happened to these hunters was great. I didn't play the DLC yet, but I'm pretty sure I probably would have ranked it higher if I did. But still, Bloodborne, one of the best games of the year. One of my favorite games of all time. It takes a lot of skill and knowledge to play this game, and I love it. I love games with a challenge, and this game really did bring something new to me, and that's why it is number three on my list of the best games of 2015. All right, two more games. Number two is The Witcher 3. Now this was a hard pick, I really loved The Witcher 3 this year. I didn't think of it as a game, I thought I was in that world, it was so immersive. The voice acting, the characters, the world around you felt real. And that is what's so beautiful about this. It's not dense with crappy AI, it is with, filled with people, filled with villages. I felt engaged with all the people around me and every person I went to. All the quests felt like they were actually something that I had to do, something that was my duty as a witcher. And that's why this game deserves all the praise it gets. I can understand why this is number one on many game of the year lists. It's not for me, but it is definitely close. This is an absolute masterpiece. CD Projekt Red should be acknowledged for their work here. It is absolutely stellar. The graphics, the voice acting, the characters. It is absolutely amazing. That's why it gets number two on my top 10 games of 2015. My game of the year is Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. And I know there's a controversy going on with Kojima and Konami, but still, this game, gameplay wise, is absolutely stellar. It is probably the most polished and best for third person stealth game I've ever played in my life. It is superb in its mechanics and gameplay that I had to give it game of the year. This game evolves the stealth genre into something that makes sense. The mechanics and systems in the game world complement each other. Like, you want to go stealthy because you want to capture dudes to bring that back to your base. And that just makes sense to me. It's something that I haven't felt in stealth games before. They just have stealth as an option or a suggestion. You don't have to go stealthy. There are loud weapons in the game. But here, you want to go stealthy. You want to capture those dudes, bring them back to your base so you can get a new gun. And it's just a great cycle of gameplay, and that's why I love Metal Gear Solid 5 enough to give it Game of the Year. Its systems and mechanics gave me emergent gameplay that I've never felt before in other video games. I can make my own stories. There are things that the AI do that is unexpected and makes me rethink my strategy sometimes. 
The story isn't there, but the thing is, everything about it is so polished and well done that I have to give it my 2015 Game of the Year. And I know some of you might not agree with what I did here, but this is my personal list. I liked Metal Gear Solid 5, it was a great experience for me, it will be one of my favorite games of all time, and this year was one of the best years of gaming in a while. And I cannot wait for 2016, and I'll see you there.